welcome to this talk. I want to spend some time looking at the remarkable Jesus with different snippets from Luke's account. The remarkable Jesus. We go to Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, and we read this story from verse 14 through to 29. I want to show in this talk that Jesus is the focus of Scripture. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? they asked. Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. And you will tell me, do hear in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. Truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath, in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of town and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. What a remarkable incident. Let's ask God to help us to understand. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your Son, Jesus, whom we call the Christ, Jesus Messiah. Thank you for his teaching in the synagogues. Teach us, we pray, as we look into this passage. In his name we ask. Amen. Would you agree with me that there have been many, many great ones all through history? You may well have your favourite, maybe Winston Churchill, or some great hero, one of the Caesars, or it could be someone else, a great poet, a great leader. But I want to suggest that we consider this man, the man from Nazareth, the one we call Jesus the Christ. I want to suggest that the Bible shows him to be the most remarkable person who ever lived and died. Well, see what you think. You see, whenever we choose a leader, we want a man of integrity, a woman of integrity. We want someone we can trust, someone who will act wisely for the benefit of all. So Dr. Luke takes us into the local synagogue in Nazareth, the place where Jesus grew up, we're told at verse 14. Jesus returned to Galilee, the north, in the power of the Spirit, News about, about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, the synagogues of the Galilee, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read. Now look how Jesus sees himself. He sees himself as the focus of Scripture. It was the custom to stand to read. He had become quite a well-known speaker, teaching in their synagogues. Everyone had praised him. 
So keeping up with his regular practice, he attends the home synagogue. He's asked to read this text, Isaiah 61, probably the text set for the day. And Dr Luke quotes it for us. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. The passage there is all about the special one, God's anointed one coming to proclaim good news. So Jesus finishes the reading. Verse 20 says he rolled up the scroll. He gives it back to the attendant and he takes his seat. No, not in the pew as we would, but he just sits down. That's the place where rabbis taught. They sat. Everyone else stood. Now what would you say about this text if you were asked to read it? Well, Luke has slowed down in the telling of the story. He makes us gasp at what's coming, staring at Jesus. The scroll is ro rolled up, it's given back to the attendant. He sits down, the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. We're waiting to see what he's got to say. Yes, our eyes are wondering, what will he say? Well, Jesus is going to tell us that he knows exactly who he is. He began by saying, 21, he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And that was to the absolute of amazement of everyone present. Today, in your hearing, this scripture fulfilled. Well, that certainly made people stand up tall and think. Yes, he was most gracious in what he said. There was no arrogance, no puffing out of his chest, no crowing that he knew he was God's man. Just gracious words, as Luke says, from his lips. All spoke well of him, 22, and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Some thought that he was Joseph's son, quite rightly. Others thought he might be out of his mind, and Jesus had anticipated that. So he says, some will no doubt say to me, physician, heal yourself. Well, many had questions. Maybe the question about being Joseph's son puzzled them. We know him. He's the local boy. He's the village builder's son. He used to work in the family business, and now he's going around speaking and teaching in the synagogues. Others might have thought he was a little bit mad. He had a rather inflated view of himself. I mean, that's the sort of impression you get from the Q&A that follows, isn't it? Jesus said to them, surely you will quote this proverb to me. 23. Physician, heal yourself. And you will tell me, do here in your hometown what we've heard you did in Capernaum. Yes, some may think he's actually lost his marbles. Others may want him to prove who he is by doing some miracles. Do in your hometown what we've heard you did in Capernaum, around the lakeside in those towns. We'll go to Capernaum for our next talk. In fact, Jesus will carry out many, many miraculous signs. After all, he's just read the text from Isaiah 61, saying he's going to proclaim freedom for prisoners and recovery of sight for blind. It's just that in this lad's, well, in a local lad's hometown, one isn't always recognised. Jesus is seen as the son of the carpenter, but he wants to tell them that actually he's the fulfiller of scripture. He is the ultimate Messiah that all Jews have been looking forward to. The one that all the Old Testament points towards. Jesus is the focus of scripture. If you know your Bible, you'll know that ever since uh, man was on earth and rebelled against God, God had promised that a man born of woman would come to crush evil. And we've often wondered who that would be. We read it about Noah. Was he the man? We read about Moses, Abraham, David. Were they the men? We hoped that they would be. But they are all flawed human beings. And when the prophet said that a Messiah would come, well, who is he? 
Jesus says, that's me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he says. I've come to proclaim good news to the poor. Why? Well, I'm the unflawed one. I I I'm born of woman. I'm sent from God. I complete God's great purposes. Now, for me, that makes him truly remarkable. What about for you? I mean, there are many people who've claimed messianic identity. But Jesus not only says he, he is the Messiah, he's come to prove it. You see, he says he's going to proclaim good news to the poor, freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, set the oppressed free. That's what he says he'll do. And the miraculous evidences that Luke is going to put forward are evidence of who Jesus is. So when we get to chapter 7 and Jesus is asked about himself, here's his reply. At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, Luke says, illnesses and evil spirits. He gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to those who asked, go back and report to John what you've seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. That's the evidence. That shows who Jesus is. Now it's been well said that Jesus is either mad, bad or God. And the people here might think he's probably mad. Others will conclude he's bad because they want him removed. But I wonder what you think of him. You see, over thousands of years, with a range of different writers, the Bible storyline has led us to the high point on the hill. We're at the scene at the top. The only one who fulfills all that has been prophesied. And Jesus knows it. He calls himself the Anointed One, the One from God. I wonder if you've come to that conclusion as well. Of all the great ones, would you agree that Jesus is the most remarkable man there is? Because if you do, you can't leave it there. You must decide whether the brilliant jigsaw has all been put together and whether you're in the picture too. You see, the remarkable man here is the man that we all need. He's the one who is good news. He's the one who offers real freedom. He heals our spiritual blindness. He truly changes us. Could you speak well of him as the people here did? Are you amazed at his gracious words as they were? Would you agree with me that he is the most remarkable man who ever lived? If so, why not fall on your face? Bow down with me and call him Lord. Gracious Father, we thank you for your man, your son, Jesus, the one you anointed as Messiah. We are thrilled to see how all history points to him, how he understands himself, knowing he is the Son of God sent from you to do your work here on earth. Please help us to appreciate him, to carefully consider him, and then fall at his feet in genuine worship. We ask in his name. Amen.